All right. <laughs> that little flower pot. Let's try a 12 ouncer. <laughs> Not a sniper. Oh, there's one behind the, underneath that goat. I didn't see him. Ah, there was one, yeah. Now there's one over there. The other goat. <laughs> there's another one down here by that pig, I think. Yeah. Oh boy, what a sniper. <laughs> hey, Hecock 45. Coming at you with a classic, at least for me. This is the old uh, Ward's Western Field 47C Chapter 2. You know, we like to get right on our Chapter 2 videos, you know, not let much time pass by. And uh, over four years ago, we did the Chapter 1 on <laughs> this, this uh, firearm. Back when we had, I guess, our first camera. Uh, I was even worse then than I am now about gabbing too much. Uh, John has improved. We got better cameras, so uh, maybe we can give you a better look at it. All right, this is the the gun that my father gave me when I was like you know 12 or 13, the first rifle, first firearm that uh, was in our house as I was growing up, the first firearm that I ever pulled a trigger on, I suppose. Okay, the very first one, that trigger right there is it. That started the addiction. <laughs> that is a historical trigger for me. And these are beautiful guns. Uh, you know, I've told the story. Check out that other video if you can stand it. But uh, it, uh, you know, I had this in my room hanging there growing up and, uh, and uh, it broke the trigger guard. Finally found another one years later. So I had the gun, I refinished the stock and I had it reblued. I put a new scope on it and then I had the bolt nickel and all that. I wanted to bring it back to, to you know, as great a condition as I could. I put a new sling on it, and uh, this is the gun. Uh, again, I remember Dad shooting this when I was a really little guy. Uh, he got it in the early 50s, uh, maybe 50, 51, 52, I'm, I'm not sure. And uh, so this was it, and uh, th this really has the history. So enough about that for now. Let's take some more shots. The, the scope seems to be on still. And uh, so I have nothing to blame. I'm going to try to shoot offhand a little bit with it. Let's try some two liters. They're a little bit larger. Maybe I can hit one. Try that pink or that lime, whatever it is over there. All right. <laughs> Again, as I've said before, if you've never shot with a uh, scope like this, telescopic sight. It doesn't make it automatic that you're going to hit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, I love it when he dies a dramatic death. Uh, because your moving around is uh, really magnified. As I said, let's try that orange one over there while well, we're on a roll. Wow. <laughs> he was not as dramatic. Okay, shooting 22 long rifle. All right, I wonder if I could hit those pots offhand. I'm going to try those pots uh, above the propane tank without bench resting here. Oh, so close. Haha. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> Fun. Let's try something a little bigger, like that pig, that little bitty pig. Oh, you miss him. <laughs> and there's a container of water right there beside it. There was a container of water. <laughs> oh boy, I think there's one round left. Let's just put one on the red plate. Oh, nope, there's another round. Let's hit the big tank. <laughs> now it's empty. Yeah, uh, phew, boy, does this thing have history. I, I should get it out more often. I really should. This is a, a family heirloom that I'll hand down to John. So I want to make sure it shoots well. And uh, when I'm gone, y'all make sure he takes care of it, will ya? I expect him to be shooting this video in 50 years, okay? So you watch for it. 
you young people. Uh, but uh, this gun you know, has a lot of sentimental value. These are those irreplaceable firearms that most of us have, and we have others. But uh, this is a really uh, interesting firearm. You don't see that many of these. It's a really large firearm. It's, uh, that thing could be a 30 out 6 as I've said before. It's a heavy, you know, a heavily built firearm, and uh, it's, it's just it's big. I remember it being extremely heavy when I was a little guy, if you can imagine that. Yeah, I actually used to be smaller and even dumber probably. That's imaginable. But this was a big, heavy gun, even though it just shot, shoots a 22. So uh, it's a beautiful gun, beautiful gun. A beautiful walnut in that thing too. So I'll quit uh, slobbering over it and load it up and shoot a little bit more here. We're shooting long rifle. You can shoot shorts in it. One advantage of, uh, let's put the bolt back, it is back. Uh, one advantage of uh, these guns is you can shoot anything in them, unlike a uh, semi-automatic generally. We're just shooting. These are hollow points. Ooh, got out the hollow points in case uh, a zombie runs across the range or a big bear or something. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're just fun. Good old bolt guns of any kind are fun to shoot. And uh, a little different to load, but that's okay. No high capacity banana magazines work in these old bolt guns. Let's see, we got some, I think I forget how many this thing holds. Holds plenty. It's amazing when I think about how many times I have loaded this firearm when I was younger than any of you. I was loading this firearm probably than any of you. Unless we've got some nine year olds, 10 year olds watching. Which you probably shouldn't be, because I'm a bad influence. Okay, now once you load it, to bolt down, and the next time it brings one up. All right, so let's just uh, let's tell. Oh, we got some close targets here too. I'll probably miss all those. <laughs> let's start on the left over here. Wow. Well, there's a nitty bitty pot. Uh, might have a bad round. We either have a bad round or uh, or there's nothing in the chamber. So as you all know, you need to kind of take a break when that happens. Count to 10, count to 30 in case it's a hang fire. Hang fire means it's still going to fire, means a delayed uh, reaction. And that's rare, it really is, but still you, you take that precaution. Uh, you just do. I don't think I have ever had a hang fire that was a true hang fire. I mean, I've had things happen where you hit the primer and nothing happened, and you, you wait your your time on it, you know, just to make sure. Probably I didn't pick up a round, but with 22, you know, it's not notoriously unreliable, so it should be okay by now. Yep, there was a round. Let's jack him out. I could have cocked it and hit him again. He'd probably gone off. All right, now, so, you know, he did that while I was trying to sight in on that little bitty pot just to be a smart aleck, didn't it? That other one. Whoop. <laughs> Doesn't matter that you've got a scope. You still have to hold it on there. See, I missed that thing too. I can see it very clearly, but uh, when you pull the trigger, the crosshairs have to be on it. Ow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let's get that last pot. Boom. Cool. You know what we haven't shot yet? Uh, the gong. We got a traditional rifle here, and we've got a traditional target. So I'll see if I can put one about the middle of the gong. I'll try. Oh, I forgot. There's a, a 12. I put a 12 ounce right by the gong in front of it. I'll try them offhand. Probably never hit it. Oh, a little bit low. Uh-oh, <laughs> went past it. Ah, I knew I missed that one. Let me get over here on the bench. Okay. Because I'm going to get it with splatter if I'm not careful. There we go. <laughs> oh, I got soft drink all over the gong. Now we'll try to put one in the middle of the gong. Boom. <laughs> I 
Yeah, it's gone worthy as well. Oh man, I guess we've uh, finished off all of our cool 22 targets. Uh, and I hope you got a good look at that. Uh, that is a, I mean, it's obviously prettier to me than it is to you because of the history, but uh, it's, it's just a neat old gun. You know, I, I was so happy to find that trigger guard. These guns are made by Mossberg for wards. You know, uh, they were, I think they were sold through various department stores back in the day, 40s, 50s. And, uh, and this one, uh, this Wards Western Field is, it's fairly popular. There were other models of it, like 46C, 46B, I think, and 47A and all these different things. And this one's the 47C which I don't see quite as often this exact model, which reminds me I didn't point out what this other gun is over here. A couple of years ago, I happened, I did happen to find one. Uh, this is another 47C, the exact same rifle at a gun show. You know, it's not in great shape. I think I paid 75 bucks for it from a guy that does not have a rear sight. It actually has a front sight. This one's really never had a front sight, but it's the exact same gun. And uh, I bought it as a parts gun. You know, again, this is, something you know as, as uh, we hand this down to John uh, he'll have uh, he'll be able to keep it in the family and uh, if he needed a whatever sling even the trigger guard looks in decent shape uh, you know the bolt those kinds of things if you start buying those some of these parts it'd be very expensive the magazine tube you know so uh, that's what that's all about I'd bring it out here too that's just uh, been it's, it looks like a piece of junk but it's uh, it's basically a parts gun that will keep this thing uh, running for a long 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 time. And one of the reasons I put the scope on this, I don't know if I mentioned that in the other video, early one, uh, it had a scope on it uh, at various times. When I first remember it, it had a scope on it, I think when uh, Dad bought it from a friend of ours. Uh, and, and then the scope was not on it, and it broke, and I think he put another some kind of scope on it. But it, it had scopes on it for, very, for most of the time that it was in my uh, childhood. And so when I restored it, I wanted a scope on it just for that reason. And... Uh, so I wanted to get it back the way it was, except better, and uh, essentially what I've done. That scope stayed, that's not an expensive scope, it's a Simmons 4x32, but uh, it's a 22 caliber rifle, so it works. Anyway, Ward's Western 47C, Chapter 2, uh, special gun uh, at the Hickok Compound, and always will be. And uh, hope you enjoyed that. Life is good.